Hey there, morning. So today I thought I would pop in and just give you an idea of how I create my painted papers. So sometimes if I'm stuck and I'm not quite sure what to do, this is the kind of thing that I'll just sit and do. Um, it doesn't take a lot of thinking about. I can use up spare pieces of paper that I've got laying around, scrapbook papers, etc., etc. Old pieces of wallpaper, I'll paint on top of those. So anything really. Um, today I'm going to be using newsprint paper. That's the paper that I usually use on my desk. So I've got a selection of stencils. I've literally just pulled out um, a few that I have. I don't think too much about it. Normally I just grab what's there. I've also grabbed just a few different stamps. I may use all of them. I might not. I might grab others. I'm not sure. I shall see as uh, I'll see as I go along. So um, this is the kind of thing I'm going to come up with. They come out different every time. Every time I do them, they'll be different. So what I have done, I'll take this out of the way, and this is double-sided, this was quite a big piece, but obviously we're not gonna, we're not gonna work on something that big today. So what I have done is I have taped a piece of newsprint to my um, table, just so that I can work on it. And so it, because it is quite thin newsprint, obviously it will move around when I'm putting paint. So it makes sense to, um, to add a little bit of uh, tape to hold it in place. So what I'm gonna do first, and I'm gonna wing this so it, it could be really cool, it could go really disastrous, so we will see. So what I'm gonna do first is I like to have some sort of black and white going on in the background. So I'm just gonna take a stencil Hopefully, I'm going to try not to move the, the table too much so that the camera doesn't move around too much. And I'm just going to go in and start adding some black stenciling in my background. And it doesn't have to be the whole stencil. So I'm just going in and just randomly getting some stenciling going on. Doesn't have to be perfect stenciling. And this is the first layer. So you really don't need, so you can see I've just got some black and white going on. You really don't need to, to worry about it being perfect stenciling or whether it's completely black or whether it goes gray. Because as I said, this is a first layer. So we're gonna be going over this at some point. So I'm just going in and just dabbing on some black paint. I'm using all Paper Artsy paints today but you can use any that you have. The Paper Artsy Challenge at the moment is um, collage, which is over on their um, blog post. There's lots of ideas for collage. So that was why I thought we would do some painted papers so we can make our own collage papers today. Okay, so let's do one more of those. I like to start off with a little bit of black because even if most of it gets covered up, it does show through under the paints. And you can see the detail in the background, which is quite cool. Okay, maybe a little bit more. use whatever you have I don't I don't normally plan I'll just grab a bunch of supplies for this and then just start working so I'm going to put that to one side okay what shall I do next what shall I do next so I'm going to grab I'm going to grab a stamp in fact let me grab one of these so I'm going to grab one of the the stamps from ETS 37 so I'm just going to take one of the bigger stamps Grab a block and black ink pad. And again, I'm not going to worry if this doesn't stamp properly, it doesn't matter. It is just about getting something going on in the background, some sort of detail going on in the background. And you could do just black and white, so you could do a whole page of just black and white. And that would work too, just using different stem stencils, different stamps. Okay, 
but this is just to get us going and create some detail in the background. As I said, I've not planned this, so it could go horribly wrong. But we'll see. And as I said, you could just do the whole thing in black and white, which would look really cool as well. So depending on uh, what you like, or you could do a, you could do some of each. So you could do some black and white and you could do some you could do some colour. So I am doing one more stamp. I'm just going to add some randomly into the background. I quite like when I do my black, and I tend to do it on uh, journal pages as well, I tend to overlap things. I quite like the look when you overlap. Okay, so put that to one side. I'm quite happy with that. The other thing that you can do with your black while that you've got your black paint out I like to have the black layer underneath because some some of it will show through on the top so all I'm doing is just loading up I've just got a, a detail brush and all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make some marks using the the black And it just gives a different dimension. So all I'm doing is just adding a different, a different shape in there somewhere. And it could be, it could have a couple of circles. Again, I'm not worrying how the um, the painting comes out. It doesn't need to be perfect. So I'm quite happy with that, and I would actually be quite happy with that as a black and white, um, black and white collage paper. So I may well do some more of that later. I'm just going to give this a quick dry, and then because if we're going to go over with coloured paint, obviously we don't want to, um, we don't want to be smudging all the colour with the, the black. So I'm just going to give it a quick dry. Shouldn't take too long because it's quite thin paint, and I know it's already this is already started to dry anyway. we need to start thinking about colours so I'm thinking a mix of these ones these are what are calling to me today so I literally just went to my went to my shelf and just picked up colours that I like the look of so I'm going to sit down now and Let's start thinking about adding some paint. Okay, put my colours in front of me so I've got them to work with. And I usually work, I work directly from the bottle when I'm painting. Obviously it means that I don't, don't waste paint. So I'm just going to start going in now and start adding some colour. Now the ink that I used underneath as well was um, archival, which means that it's permanent and it's not gonna move. So, so you can see there, I had a little bit of wet paint, but that's fine. So really important that you, you dry. 
and you can go so you can see there I'm going around that circle rather than um, rather than going over so you can kind of pick what you're doing I might do the same there just to pick out that area um, And I like to leave some areas black and white so I won't cover, I'm not going to cover everything because it's quite nice to have that black and white contrast going on in the background. So I'm going in there but I will leave, I'm going to leave some of this in black and white. And because you're putting the paint on thin you can still see some of what's underneath anyway so it's just going to give you an extra detail. On what's going on. Depending on what colours you use as well, so some of the paper artsy colours are obviously more translucent than others, so some are going to cover up more and some are going to be a little bit more see-through. So I'm just going to grab a second colour, so I'm going to go in with bubblegum and just let's see. So I'm just using shapes that I've already got, so shapes that I've already created. And painted layer is always, or for me certainly, is always the messy layer. But it's what we do on top and details that we put on top that make a difference. So I'm just going in where I know I had those loops. From the paint. So it's just starting to give us something different going on, a different dimension. So I could go in there as well. As I said, this is just about getting our paint colour down. So don't stress too much about what it looks like because we can add layers over the top. Okay, so I'm just going to add, I like the Amsterdam um, fluorescent. It's called um, Reflex Rose, but it's a really lovely bright colour. So I'm just I'm going to add a little bit of that in there. I do like to have a little bit of fluorescent in there somewhere because it's really going to make the pages pop. So I'm just adding it in a few areas. What I can also do is actually go in over some of the painted areas and I'm just using my finger. And just dabbing the paint on. I don't think you can ever have too much fluorescent. So I'm going to that one as well and I like the way the fluorescent looks over the turquoise blue because it almost gives it in areas a little uh, purple like a purple tinge so it looks quite cool and there's no reason so I'm going to go over that a little bit there just to bring that color out a little bit more Now the fluorescents are really um, translucent, so you're gonna see everything. So just bear in mind that everything that you go over with the translucent, you're gonna see all that detail underneath. But 
we can go over with some other details later. And it can be, I find when, when I'm doing this kind of thing, it could be one thing that you add that completely changes. It could be one colour or one thing that you do that completely changes the way that your page looks. Um, so I'm going to go in with a little bit of Dirty Lime. Now Dirty Lime is a translucent too. So, um, okay, let's just go in. And Dirty Lime, even though it's not, um, it's not a fluorescent, it, it, it's as near as you're going to get to a fluorescent in a normal paint. It's got a real bright tone to it. So I'm just going in. And then this one down here, I'm going to leave a little bit of the the white in the middle, the black and white. I'm not going to cover everything. So one of the things that I can do, because I'm using, what you tend to find is a lot of your bright colours are going to be translucent. So what I can actually do is just add some of my white and mix the white with the colour. And even though you get, obviously you're going to get a completely different tone, it is going to give a more opaque finish. So you are going to be able to cover up. A little bit more because we don't want everything that's in the background showing we want some of it showing through we don't want everything showing so i'm just mixing some of the white with the translucent and i can always go back in on top with the original color to brighten it up again But it's just going to block out some of those areas. We don't want to see everything. If we want to see everything that's going on in the background, then we should have, we would have just left it black and white. And sometimes you do something and you think, hmm. Don't like that, but the beauty of working on these papers is that you just keep building up and you build up as many layers as you need to. It's not finished. And bearing in mind, if you're going to use this as collage paper as well, at some point you're going to tear this up into pieces. This, is, this isn't a work of art. You're not doing this as a work of art. You're going to tear it up. So, you know, you don't get too hung up on on what it's looking like. So what colour shall I go for next? I'm thinking the slimed. Obviously, if you're using lots and lots of different colours, just be careful about the um, the mixing of colours. So if I let my green mix with a wet pink, I'm going to get quite a nasty, horrible colour. And I don't want to do that. So just make sure if you are using colours that are gonna um, that are gonna mix and be quite nasty, just make sure that you dry in between. So at the moment, it's looking quite messy. But I'm certainly not going to panic. A bit more green down in the corner. Because once we start putting in details and stuff, we 
can tidy up. And it looks completely different. When you put the details on top, it actually does take on a completely different look. So this is why, obviously, the, the thing with working with newsprint, which is what I'm working with at the moment, is that it is very thin. So I do want to be careful. Obviously, I don't want to tear it. Um, so I'm just going to work. If I feel that it's getting a little bit too wet, then I'll just give it a dry in between. So... So I do want a little bit more pink, so I'm going to use some cerise. Um, obviously being careful because I've just put green on and I don't want it to make horrible colour. If you do that by accident, it's not the end of the world. You can dry it. What I would suggest is if you start seeing something going brown, then, unless you want it to be brown, obviously, is you just dry it off. So just stop what you're doing straight away, get it dry, and then you can go in over the top. The beauty of acrylic paint is that because of its, the way it's made, you can go back over and cover once it's dry. So, a little bit more, I think, maybe a little bit more over here. area right so what I'm going to do I've got a lot of color down now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get that dry because I don't want to be going over it again I'm really saturating the print so I'm just going to get that dry and then I'm going to move on to the next step going to do next I think is I am going to go in with some white I think I'm going to add some white stenciling because the white's an opaque so it's going to push a lot of this color back into the background so you can choose any stencil whichever one you want so I'm going to use this one is PS187. So this is the part if you've got ugly pieces or ugly bits that you really don't like and you really want to cover up, this is where you can go in with your white. Okay, so I'm just going to take my white paint and I'm just going to go in and I'm going to add some stenciling. And what this is just going to start doing is it's just going to start pushing all of that colour that we've already done. It's just going to start pushing it down into the background and bring it all together. At the moment, it's quite a mix mash of stenciling and painting and stamping. So I'm just going to go in and you can do the same, same thing applies. You can do part of the stencil, you can do the whole stencil. Something like this one's great because it's got a natural end and it's it's different all the way around. I don't really like stenciling to the edge if I've got one that's got a very definite circle, but that's just a personal preference. So I'm just gonna go around. And again, I'm not worrying if it's perfect stenciling. Because this is just going to give me some 
detail going on in the background and start to push things back. Okay, so where else? I might have a little bit over here. So I'm just really, I'm just looking for areas that have not got a lot going on or if it's an area that I think is particularly ugly that I want to cover up, using your white is a good way to do that. And I'm thinking maybe in this corner, because this corner is quite, quite ugly. said you don't have to do the whole stencil so I might just go in and just do a small portion of the stencil and go round so that's quite cool do I think I need any more I actually don't so normally I wouldn't necessarily do four but I'm actually quite happy with the way that's looking so I'm going to put that to one side um, so what do I do next? What shall I do? So I think, so I want to bring more of that turquoise blue in and I know that the turquoise blue is an opaque colour so I don't need to do anything to it to be able to put it over the top of the paint and it's going to stand out. So I'm just taking a different type of stencil. So this is, oh let me have a look, PS142. So this is an older stencil, so I'm just going to go in, I'm going to use a little bit of the cerulean and let's just cut the end of my sponge so I don't waste it and use that. Okay, so I'm just going to add a few of these flowers. In the blue so that way I'm gonna bring and because it's because I'm doing it quite thinly obviously I can add layers I could draw it and add an extra layer to to bring out the color but sometimes it's nice to be able to see what's going on underneath so I'm just gonna start going in and just add a few of these I've got a large and small one there so I can do varying sizes Just going to add a few of these so because this is a different kind of stencil to the other one they're going to stand out and it's just giving a little bit more detail going on and i'm going to outline some of this with pen later so i'm not worried too much if it's if it's a little bit messy and the stenciling is not perfect i'm not too worried because i'll go over it later okay so maybe the bigger one over here. And I don't worry too much about going over existing stenciling as well, because then that's gonna give you that build up of layers. So it's gonna give you that depth going on. And if you do something that you don't like, so if you do it and you kind of look and think, oh, wish I didn't do that, then we'll just put another layer on at a later, later time. But just go for it. Okay, so I'm feeling one more, I think, of this particular one. But don't be afraid to try, because you don't know. Unless you, unless you give it a go, you don't know what it's gonna look like. So already I'm, I'm starting to be, I'm quite happy, I'm starting to really like what's, what's coming on. So, um, I've got a lot of paint colour down now, so I've got a lot going on. What I want to do now, I'm going to get it dry and then I'm going to think about adding some stamping. So um, I'm going to get this dry. I don't want to stamp over wet paint because otherwise all I'm going to do is tear my paper and ruin my stamps. So I'll get it dry and then we'll come back. Okay, 
Okay, so what stamps shall we add? Mm, decisions, decisions. So, okay. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of the stamps from ETS 24, which are the scribble stamps. So um, just because I'm thinking it's a very, they're a very fine line stamp. So um, it's going to give a completely different look to our background. So everything we've got so far is quite chunky. It's quite big and it's quite chunky. So I'm going to use the flower, the large flower from ETS 24, which is one of the older sets. And I'm going to add a few of these. So I'm just going to look at where I think. So here, I've not got a lot going on here. There's quite a lot of paint going on, but there's not a lot else. So I could go in there, I think. The thing with doing collage papers, which is different to if you were doing a journal page, is if I was doing a journal page, I would say about leaving white space in effect, or passive space, we call it, so that you can see a flow of colour. The difference with doing a collage page is obviously this would be torn up into smaller pieces to use in a project. So you want every inch to have something interesting going on. Okay, so whereas normally I would say, no, space things out, don't put, you know, make sure things go over the edge and make sure... You don't tend to do that when you're doing collage or collage pages because you want there to be lots and lots of detail going on so that you can use that in um, in other projects, as I said. So I'm just going to go in and it doesn't have to be, obviously you don't have to add it to the whole page. It doesn't have to be in the centre. But I quite like these scribble stamps because they've got that fine detail. So it's a fine line and it's, that just gives a different dimension to what you're doing. So just going in again, where else? Uh, I'm feeling I need something over here. Maybe in there. And again, if you really don't like something that you've done, you can cover it up. But what you tend to find is when this is cut into pieces, it looks very, very different. So, do I want any more? I'm thinking just a little bit over here on the edge. Okay, what I might do um, what I might do is there is, in this set, there is a smaller flower. I might just add a couple of those as well. There's a couple of areas I want to put something, but not anything too big. So I might just put a couple of the smaller ones dotted around. They kind of fill a space without being too much. So maybe one there. The only problem with the scribble stamps is I get a little bit carried away because I really like them. And I could just go on and on and on and keep adding. Okay, so let's put them away. So it's always nice as well when you're when you're doing these. Obviously, we've added some nice um, some nice light lines. So the stamps that we've used so far have been light lighter lines. So it's always nice as well to use something that's got a bit more of a bold um, edge to it, whether that be a mark making stamp or whether you use something else. So this is ETS forty one, which is one of the new sets, which is the mark making. So um, I think I'm going to take the crosses and just add a few of those here and there. Just to now, we've got some bold black going on, but obviously we've put a lot now into our background. So I'm just going to bring a little bit more now 
to the forefront. So again, I'm just looking, where is there not a lot going on? Because we want every inch of the paper to be covered. So I'm thinking there looks like a, a good place. So fantastic, looks really, really cool. And obviously rotate your stamps as well because that way you get a different look. So again, I'm thinking here. And you can see it's a very different look with the bolder stamps to the fine lines and just gives a very different look on your, on your page. So I'm thinking down here we could do with something. And obviously you can keep going, keep going, keep going, and building up layers. But I'm kind of, at the moment, I'm kind of liking how it's starting to come together. So I need to think about what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm thinking maybe a little bit off the edge here. And the bold stamps are good as well if you've got areas that you don't like because because they stand out because they are bold and they stand out they tend to push other things back which works really well mm. okay so i'm liking that so what else what else can i do so i'm just going to take so i have the little the small dot stamp in this one as well. I think I'm gonna add a little bit of that. So this one I'm gonna do off the block um, because I just wanna add. So what I do, if I'm doing it off the block, is I ink up the whole stamp. So I've inked up the whole thing and then I will go in and just tap, and just tap, just in an area on the stamp. And then what that's gonna do is, you'll just get small patches rather than, so just tap, tap. And I'm just going in, I love the small dots, so I do tend to add a few of those. And even areas like this, you know, we've got, yes, we've got that background going on, but there's not a lot else going on. So don't be afraid to have things overlapping to give more detail. I do love the dot stamps, so I do 10, and because they're a small image, they just work really, really well. To give you some detail going on in your background. Okay. So one of the other things that works really, really well if you're doing um, collage papers is adding some sort of script or some sort of writing. So if you have um, script stencils or um, stamped words, it doesn't have to be alphabets, it could just be words. Um, so I could go in let's think um i could just randomly let me just randomly pick up some letters let's not think too much about what letters we're adding it doesn't have to be a word so i'm going to just pick five or six let's go with five to start okay and i'm just gonna put those together Make sure they're the right way up. Not that that really matters, but we will. And then what I'm doing, I've just got an elastic band. Hopefully this is gonna work and I'm just gonna put that over the top just to join those together. It's just gonna make it easier for me when I'm stamping, okay? And then what I can do is get my ink pad 
and ink up my letters. So, and you could do an actual word. It doesn't have to be, I've just picked randoms. Um, and I've just put a band around them just so that I can stamp them all at once so that I don't have to think about stamping. So I can just go in now and just add some random letters. Let's go there. And as I said, if you want a particular word, you could add a particular word. And I turn everything round as well. Because you don't know which way you're going to use this, I will turn everything. So some things I'll stamp upside down. I don't worry if I get the edges of the stamps. Um, be there. doesn't matter if the stamps don't stamp properly but it's just adding something extra into the background a different type of stamp so and I do like to add some sort of words or letters or numbers into the background because it does make a difference and it's in, it adds interest to your background. So I think there, I think that will be my last one. So that's starting to look, that's looking really cool now. Well I think so anyway, you may disagree but I like the way that that's starting to come together. So I'm just gonna give a quick blast of the dry because I just wanna make sure that that ink's dry and then I'm gonna go in and add some pen. You can use coloured paint pens, you can use gel pens. I quite like to use my gel pens, um, just because it gives a different detail again. So I'm just gonna go in and in a couple of areas, I'm just gonna pick out, so all I'm doing right now is just picking out a couple of my um, stenciled shapes that I had there from earlier with the white gel pen. And I can go, so you can see I'm going over those stamps. So what I'm doing in effect is I'm bringing that flower to the forefront because I'm pushing the stamping down into the background. So I quite like that. I quite like that that brings that to the front. So I'm gonna do that on the others as well. And you don't have to do it on everyone, but I'm quite liking the way that that's looking, so I'm going to add that to, to all of those. I've had to order more white pens today. I usually have lots and lots of white pens, and I've suddenly realised that I'm down to my last one. And that's a definite no-no, I started to panic a little bit today. So I've had to order some more because obviously I don't know when I'm going to be able to actually get to my craft shop. So I'm just going in. And just adding some white detail. And it really makes a difference when you start adding these details at the end. It really does make a difference. And it gives more, you know, even if you're going to be tearing this up, it gives more going on in a particular area. And I find this a really relaxing thing to do. If I'm really not sure, so you know, if I'm not sure what I'm going to do, so today, for instance, there was no, there was certainly no plan. Um, 
and thankfully it's come together quite quickly it doesn't always but you just keep going and it's quite a nice thing to sit and do so what I could do as well is I could go in so I'm now going in with my black pen and I might just re-emphasize some of these lines that I had there in the first place So I'm kind of looking, maybe there, maybe around those circles, because that's given me, I've got the thick black line of the paint, but now I've got the thinner line of the, um, of the pen, which works quite well. So I'm just kind of looking at areas that I could add a little bit of detail to. And I could, so even areas here where I've got these, um, where the white stencilings in the background, I could go in and just add a little bit of pen work. It doesn't have to be a lot, just a little bit here and there. Because obviously in that area, if I cut up that piece of paper, there's not really that much going on. So I'm just going in. You can see I'm not even being careful but just a little bit of detail here and there it's just going to give something else okay maybe a little bit here as well Okay, um, I'm just going in with the paint pen, dots always work well, so I'm just adding some dots here and there, and I'm thinking I want some more of that fluorescent, so I might have to go in with a little bit more of the fluorescent. So. I'm just using the Posca pens just to add some little dots here and there. And again, if you imagine when this is torn up, that just gives another element. To use in your projects. So if I'm looking and there's any way that I think is looking quite plain, then now is the time to add some detail in there. So I am thinking I need some more fluorescent. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab a fluorescent paint pen or a couple of fluorescent paint pens. So I have a couple of fluorescent Poscas. This is quite a big one but it does give so what this is going to do is it's going to give a different shape again so if i want to add some more detail using this one it's going to give me let's have a look where do i want to this is going to give me a different shape again because this is a chisel tip and all i'm doing is dabbing but that's really cool i like that so again I don't tend to have a lot of the chisel tip pens because I find that something that's maybe a 3M is much more use. I get a lot more use out of, but for something like mark making, they're, they're pretty cool. So. And obviously you can go on and on putting your details in you can put as much detail or as little detail as you want but I do like to overlap things Oh, 
I could definitely get carried away with this fluorescent. Very nice. Okay. So, am I happy? Do I want to add some more? So I'm thinking, let's get that one working. So I have got a couple that are, oh, that one's starting to run out. Let me grab another one. I do keep a good stock. I keep a good stock of fluorescent pens and Posca pens because I do like them. So I'm just going in a few areas. What I'm remembering when I'm doing this is that this isn't a piece of art. This isn't a finished project. This is something that will get broken up at a later date. and will get torn up and torn into pieces. Or I may take a portion, I may work it and work a portion that I look at and think, yep, yeah, uh, I'm quite happy with that as a background. One of the things that I do tend to do is when I've done something like this, is I will, um, maybe go in and photocopy um, so that I've got that there for um, a later date. So one of the things, the last thing that I'm gonna do, I've got some, I've got a fluorescent yellow and I'm just gonna add some fluorescent yellow splatter because splatter makes everything better. And it gives, that's going to give another detail. It's going to give another detail that's going to sit in the background and fill in some of those spaces. So if you have got any spaces that are left, this is going to fill in some of those spaces. So what you do, if you've got a Posca pen, if you're adding splatters with a Posca pen, what you do, I'm going to, um, what you do is you prime. So basically you pounce the nib onto your craft mat until you get a little pool you'll get a pool of um, paint in effect and what you do then is you pick up that paint with the edge of your pen with the nib of your pen I should say and then you do exactly the same as you would do with your paintbrush and you splatter and you can splatter obviously as much or as little as you like but I think because this is a collage paper, the more the better. Because that means that when I do tear it up, more spaces are going to have that detail in it. More bits of paper are going to have that splatter. hope that makes sense. So as much or as little as you want, but you know... I think you can't have enough. So I think that is it. I'm quite happy with how that's looking. So I've got quite a lot going on there. There's quite a lot happening. And then once that's dry, I'll peel away my washi tape that was holding down my, uh, my page. And then... Um, yeah, and then it's going to be ready to use. So if you're ever sitting there and you're thinking to yourself, oh, I don't know what to do today, um, and you don't have a specific project in mind, then just start throwing some paper, paint, uh, throwing some paint and some um, stencils around and just see what you come up with and create something that doesn't need to be perfect. It doesn't need to be fantastic. Um, you just want it so that you can use that 
in um, in another piece of artwork and it does I promise you it does get your creative juices flowing so it's a really cool thing to to be doing what I'll do is I'll take some close-ups of what I've done today I'm going to post this um, in my creative cafe group on Facebook I will also add it to my YouTube channel which is just Tracy Scott so that you'll be able to find it um, easily in in months to come um, hope you enjoyed it and I'd love to see what you've been doing if you do um, if you do join in and you do do the project project that I've done today then you can post those in my Tracy Scott creative cafe group on Facebook or you can tag me um, Tracy Scott or Tracy Scott stamps or Tracy Scott stencils or paper artsy and um, on Instagram and I will find I will find your posts I do regularly look for posts um, with those tags so head on over to the paper artsy blog as well as I said they have got a collage challenge on at the moment so um, I'm sure that they would be really thrilled to see what you've been doing as well and I'll speak to you soon I'll come back with another project maybe in the next week or so thanks bye